Hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting tutorial in CSS and JavaScript. Uh, today I'm going to be kickstarting a bunch of tutorials on animation and my plan is to cover as much information on CSS and JavaScript animations that, that I know pretty much. Uh, and uh, you know I haven't been posting any tutorial during the last three days and the reason was because I was doing some you know prototyping just to make sure I have enough material uh, well let's say exciting materials for you to obviously enjoy and learn at the same time alright let's get started so I'm gonna create a new prototype and I'm gonna define a div with a class box let's just save this for now and let's uh, style this box so that we have a visual maybe with 100 pixel and height 100 pixel as well um, background tomato sounds good and let's just do cursor pointer so it feels nice when you just click on it uh, and then here's the thing I'm going to introduce you uh, to the animation property and how you can use that to animate stuff so the first thing you when you want to create animations is you need to define something like keyframes and give it a name so let's let's just put animation name you can put whatever shake you know jump whatever you want and then we will start by defining our sort of keyframes uh, and let the browser does its job for us so let's say I have a from or and a to so I want the animation to do whatever it is from front and then all the way to two and then the keyframes within the from and to it's the browser that will sort of interpolate for us so I'm going to define a transform, uh, translate on x-axis, zero. So basically you want to tell your initial or your base kind of uh, properties that you, you want to animate. So in this case, I'm using transform to translate this object. So initially, I want it to just be where it is. So translate zero. And then two will be maybe transform translate X and then let's put maybe 400 pixels right you can pretty much animate any property you want like opacity margin you know top left whatever uh, so now now that you've created your uh, animation uh, I would use JavaScript to kind of interact with this box so I want to click on this box and then when I click the animation starts so I'm going to my JS panel configuration, choose jQuery, let's save it and close this. And then I'm going to just, you know, say when everything is loaded on the page, uh, on my box div. So the div with the class box, when it's clicked, I will pass a function. And then in that function, I want my, let's say, box uh, gets the class. Uh, animate right so basically by clicking on a box I add the class animate and here I will define what what I want to happen on the animate so I know that I have defined this animation with this name so we will put animation name uh, well let's say <laughs> animation name here let's just change this for the sake of not having the same name here animation name move and as you see nothing happens because I need to define the duration right let's put it two seconds so now if I click on this you will see that my animation starts and it takes two seconds right so what I want to do is and, and you can see one one very important thing is that when I start clicking again it doesn't do anything right and I'm gonna tell you how to fix it in, in a moment so now, the other thing that I can define is a delay. So sometimes you want to have a delay uh, before your animation starts. And here is 
how you define it. Let's put two seconds, right? Now, when I click on it, it waits two seconds and then starts the animation for two seconds, as you could see, right? Let's change it to one second so that we don't wait any time. So one second and then move. The other cool thing that you can define is something called animation timing function, which kind of reflects the speed of your animation or how the velocity should react when, when you uh, have your animation. And by default, it's something called ease out, meaning that the animation starts with a constant speed and then it gets slower. Right, so you can see it starts and then you know it slows down at the end. So there are some other options. Let's say you want to have a slow start but then a constant speed. So it starts slowly and then it gets bigger, right? Or you can have a linear animation, which is like definitely constant speed from start to be to end, right? And uh, let's let's just leave it as is in so it starts slowly and then it adds to the speed the other thing you can define with the animation in CSS that you can't use like in transitions uh, unless you you know do something about it in JavaScript or you know apply multiple classes is something called animation iteration count right let's say what happens if I set it to three so it actually iterates the animation three times. So one, two, and three, right? And then the other thing that you can define is something called animation uh, direction, right? So by default, it's a forward animation. So I would just put reverse. And if I click on it, you'll see that it just has the animation in the reverse order. The other option you have, uh, you'll see, and you, you can create cool and cool things with it, is something called alternate. So depending on the number that you have over here, it starts alternating. So you can see that it goes this way, and then back, and then again, and then it stop, stops. So it's important when you use alternate, you notice that you need to set the count correctly depending on how many times you want this to alternate, right? So you could see, even though it says alternate, it actually looks at this guy, right? So in order to have a full two times alternate, I need to define four here, right? So now we have a delay of one second, and then one, two, then three, and then back four, right? So these are the properties or basic properties that you could use to create the animation and if you don't want all of these together, you can actually have them in one property, which is called animation, right? So it starts with the name of the animation, then the duration, then the timing function, let's put is in, then the delay, which is one second, then the iteration count, four, and then the animation direction, which is alternate, right? And then I can go ahead and delete this. So you could see that it actually does exactly the same thing, right? As easy as that. And the cool thing about this is, for example, if you remove, because, because the, the, these, these kind of uh, values differ in the nature, right? One of them is like a, you know, integer value. The other one is in this format. You can, for example, if you don't want a delay, you can simply just remove the delay. And regardless of the you know, if it's there or not, it will still work, but it removes the delay for you, right? So, a lot of these things are actually, if you search for CSS animations, you can pretty much see that if you go to, for example, W3C School, you can see that it kind of tells you what exactly things do, you know, things, for example, like you know, sometimes you want to have multiple animations, and that's uh, and that's the cool thing about about the, these keyframes, right? You can have multiple states that you want your animation to to actually uh, operate, right? So maybe uh, in the first place you want to have background red, whatever, and then uh, you know one fourth of your animation time you want something, you know half of your animation you want to have something else and two-third of your animation something else 
and, and you know, so, so forth. Uh, the thing that I, I wanted to tell you, so as I said, let's, let's change this to tree. This is actually very cool. So if you change this to tree, so that you're going to have one coming back and then the third one and then it jumps back but what if you want the animation to stop at the end right and this is where you have this uh, this kind of property here which is called animation field mode right so and you can see that it's like specifies a style for the element blah 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 and then what you want to do is you want to define this animation field mode which I'm going to do it here animation field mode to be forward right so now let's just change this to one second so that it gets faster so you go this 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 sorry it should be actually forwards so this 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 and you can see it stops at the end state of your animation right it doesn't go back again this is something that a lot of people ask so basically by using this property you make sure that the animation stops at the end. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have prepared some prototypes. I would leave the uh, link to these prototypes. And then in the next tutorials, I'm going to go over and tell you how to do this. So a bunch of the inspiration for a bunch of these are coming from the material design motion. So let's just search motion here. And if you look at the material design motion, there's this very nice introduction. Material design is alive. And it lives in a world a lot like ours. A world that's responsive, natural, aware, and intentional. Material design. All right. So basically, I got two inspirations here. One is this, you know, ringing or shaking right that is all done using animation and here you can see that I defined like three states zero half and hundred percent and I translate this and you can see that it has this very nice shake effect and also I tried to like recreate the first uh, circular or circle animation so when you click on this you have uh, this animation Uh, so I'm going to go over this as well. So you can imagine I'm kind of showing some teasers for the next animations. And then I will also, if you remember, I had a tutorial on how to create create a flipping card sort of calendar effect. I went, to, you know, this is a work in progress. I tried to use some HTML preprocessors and CSS preprocessors, specifically Jade, which is nowadays called Pog, and then also SAS specifically SCSS uh, and I'm going to tell you what you can achieve using these and then you can see if I change this for example to 31 and then also this value to 31 you're going to see that I have this very nice animation that goes all the way to 31 so I'm it's a work in progress I'm working on you know the transition uh, the, the, the duration of these and all sort of stuff here and I'm gonna for those of you who doesn't know Jade or you know SAS or all these preprocessors in HTML and CSS. They make your life really easy by writing you know uh, for loops, you know conditionals and stuff. So for example, if I if I wanted to create this by pure HTML, let me just let's say compile this. I had to go write all this code over here. Whereas by using this, I basically write ten lines of code. The same actually goes for CSS. You can see that I have defined some, you know, for loops over here, some conditionals, some, uh, you know, interpolations and stuff. If I want to show you what the code looks like, look at this. Look at this. So I had to go ahead and write all of these where here I simply just define some, you know, loops and stuff. And I pretty much create some very cool animation. So, yes, I hope you enjoyed this session. Again, you know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you are a newcomer, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, otherwise, you know, like and share and uh, just just pretty much contribute so that I can create these cool animations and as well tutorials. Have a good day and night and see you next time. Goodbye.